pre-calculus lesson 2.4 part 2. In part 1 of lesson 2.4 we talked about long, polynomial long division and synthetic division. More importantly how we can use the factor theorem to show that if we get a remainder of zero during synthetic division then that factor is going to or sorry that binomial is going to be a factor of the given polynomial. We're going to use that to help us with our graphing of polynomials. So for these next couple of examples we're going to be doing the following. Part one, we're going to describe the end behavior using our leading coefficient test. Then we're going to use that synthetic division to show that we have a factor by remainder of zero. And then using the synthetic division, what's left over, we'll factor completely to find the list of all the zeros, which are the x-intercepts, and then also determine their behavior at the x-axis, i.e. if they're going to bounce or cross. And then finally, we'll put that all together to help us sketch the graph. So our very first one we're going to look at here is we're going to try to graph x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And we're given that x plus 1 is the binomial that we need to show that as a factor. But before we start with that, let's go ahead and find its leading coefficient and degree to get its end behavior. Notice in this case that we have a degree of 4, which is even, and a positive leading coefficient. If we think back to our leading coefficient test, we learned that if it's even, then the, the directions have to be the same. And since it's a positive, this is going to be a positive leading coefficient. This is going to be a positive infinity, positive infinity, i.e. a rise, rise. Number two here, then, is we're going to go ahead and prove that x minus 4 is a factor. Using our factor theorem, we know that this means that we need to do synthetic division and get a remainder of 0 out. So we're going to go ahead and put our 4 find our zero, which in this case would be a positive four, list out our coefficients, the one, negative five, two, eight, and zero. Notice that since we're missing a constant term, we're still going to put a zero in that column, so I'll have to include that. And then from there, we're going to add and then multiply. So we're gonna bring down the one, and we're gonna get one times four, which is four, add down, give us a negative one, multiply by four, giving us a negative four, add down, giving us a negative two, multiply, get a negative eight, get a zero, multiply by zero, so zero, and we get the remainder of zero out, which means that we have proven by the factor theorem that x minus four is a factor and positive four is a zero. The great part about this then is that we can use the remaining coefficients and go ahead and factor that. So that means here that we're gonna get one x cubed minus one x squared minus 2x as our leftover polynomial. And we can go ahead and break this down by setting this equal to zero and factoring. Notice that all three terms have an x, so we can go ahead and take out that GCF, which will give us an x squared minus x minus two, which is a quadratic that we can go ahead and factor using our cross method, i.e. we need to think of two numbers that will multiply to our a times c, which is negative two, but add to our b, which is negative one. And so in that case, our two numbers are going to be a negative two and a positive one, which means this is gonna factor into an x minus two and an x plus one. So the fully factored form here of this polynomial would be x times x minus two, x plus one, and x minus four. And so if we set those all equal to zero, then we're gonna get the factors, or in this case, the x-intercepts of 2, negative 1, 0, and a positive 4. Notice in this case that they all only appear one time so that they ha all have odd multiplicity, which means that all the zeros are going to cross at the x-axis. So if we go ahead and plot those and draw the crossing and add our end behavior, which we, again was a rise rise, we know that we can go ahead and connect our dots here, our x-intercepts, and we're gonna get this W shape, which we know is the shape of a quartic graph. We also think back, if we look at our graph, it only changed directions three times, which by the number of turns rule, should always be one less than the degree, which makes sense since it's degree four. And so our graph should be pretty close like this if we go ahead and check this on our graphing calculator or Desmos. Go ahead and pause the video here and go ahead and try that. On our next example here, we're going to go ahead and work with our new polynomial of 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus x plus 2, and we're given 
the binomial 2x minus 1. Let's go ahead and describe the end behavior. In this case, our end behavior, we know that we have a degree of 3, which is odd, a leading coefficient here of positive 2, and so this right here is going to be a fall rise, since it's an odd degree, so it's opposite behavior and positive. Our next step here is we want to use division to find to prove that x, 2x plus 1 is a 0. Now, we talked about before, though, that we can only use synthetic division if we're dividing by a factor of x plus or minus a number. Since we have the 2x plus 1 here, this is where we're actually going to have to use polynomial long division. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up as 2x plus 1 into 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus x plus 2. And remember, to do long division, we want to set up the thing about how do we get from 2x to 2x cubed. Well, that would be by multiplying by x squared. Then we're going to go ahead and distribute the x squared to both terms, giving us a 2x cubed plus x squared. And then we're going to subtract. We're just going to cancel out those guys. If we take negative 5 minus an x squared, that gives us a negative 6x squared. And we're going to bring down the x. To get from 2x to a negative 6x squared, we have to multiply by a negative 3x, which if we go ahead and distribute, we have that negative 6x squared minus 3x, and then we're going to subtract. The negative 6x squareds are going to cancel out. But if we take x minus a negative 3, that means we're actually adding, which gives us a 4x, and we can bring down the 2. Well, how do we get from 2x to 4x? We're going to multiply by 2. So we multiply both the 2x and 1 by 2. We get a 4x plus 2, which if we go ahead and subtract, we'll cancel everything out, still giving us a remainder of 0. And so, by the factor theorem, since we got a remainder of 0, that proves that 2x plus 1 is actually going to be a factor. And we're going to have a 0 at negative 1 half. So then we can go ahead and use that leftover solution of that quadratic of x squared minus 3x plus 2 to find our other zeros. So we're going to go ahead and set that equal to 0 and go ahead and factor that. So in this case, we need to think of two numbers that will multiply to a positive 2 that add to a negative 3. Well, the only numbers that multiply to 2 are 2 and 1, but to add to a negative 3, they both, both must be negative. So we get x minus 2 and x minus 1, which will give us the other two zeros of a positive 2 and a positive 1. And so our other, or all three zeros here are going to be 2, 1, and if we saw our other factor that we proved to be 0, negative 1 half. And since they all appear once, giving us odd multiplicity, they're all going to cross at the x-axis. So if we go and plot those and add our end behavior, we're going to get this nice little cubic shape here, which, again, has two changes in direction, which matches our change rule. And so if we go ahead and type this into Desmos or use our graphing calculator, we can go ahead and check that we actually drew an accurate graph. For our next example here, we have, we're going to start by finding the end behavior as well. So in this case, our degree is going to be 3, which is odd, so opposite directions. But we have a negative leading coefficient. So this means we're going to flip our normal and have a rise to the left and a fall to the right. Go ahead and write that down again. But in this case, what we want to prove that the factor x, or sorry, the binomial x minus 2 is a factor. So if we go ahead and set up our synthetic division here, since in this case it is of the form x plus or minus or constant, we can go ahead and add down that negative 1, multiply it by 2, giving us a negative 2. And if we keep going, we're going to get that negative 4 plus 4 which is going to add to 0, which is going to prove that we have a factor in x minus 2. So we're going to take that remaining coefficients to create our new polynomial, which is will give us a negative x squared plus x plus 2. Now note here, this is a quadratic, so that means we can use factoring to solve this. We could also use quadratic formula if we really wanted to, but let's just try factoring. Remember, it's always easiest to factor if we always have a positive x squared term. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out a negative here. That's going to change the signs of all these terms. Again, it's x squared minus x minus 2. 
From here then, we know then that this is a quadratic that we can use our AC cross method on. So we need two numbers that will multiply to negative two, but add to a negative one. In this case, that would give us an x minus two and an x plus one. And so those are gonna be our other factors. If we're gonna set those equal to zero, we're gonna get a positive two and a negative one as two of our possible zeros. We also already proved that x minus two is a factor, so that gives us another positive two. And so, in this case then, that means that x minus one, since it has it only appears once, it's going to across, but since x equals two appears twice, it's going to touch at two on the x-axis. You might be asking about that negative sign that we just said on the outside. Since it's just like a negative one, it's a constant without an x, it's not going to affect our zeros here, so we can kind of forget about it. So if we go ahead and plot our two zeros of one and two, we know to, again know that it's going to cross at one and touch at two, which fits our end behavior. And so we can go ahead and add our rise and our fall to the right. And if we go ahead and fill in our curve there, we know that this is a degree three. So we have two changes in direction, which if we graph this on Desmos or our graphing calculator, we should see a similar graph. This right here concludes how we're going to use our synthetic and long polynomial division to help us graph polynomials. Pause the video here and go review any of these examples as needed.